Welcome back and happy Tuesday. This is a great day, beautiful day outside. I have another rock star guest. I get excited about talking to her. She's done so many great things. And today we're going to be speaking with Megan Loist, who is founder of Gen Z VCs, as well as an investor at Lara Hippo Ventures. Lara Hippo Ventures. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the adoption of the metaverse. So Megan, thank you so much for being here. Looking forward to the conversation. Yeah, likewise, Scarlett. Always good to see you. Awesome. So let's start with the audience that we have on Tech Tuesdays Global covers all different types of roles and backgrounds. So let's demystify this for a second. What is the metaverse? What does it mean? Yeah, I think the the easiest way to think about it is it's basically a virtual world online where you can work, socialize, shop, and play. Uh, because, you know, interesting, when Facebook, obviously one of the, the largest sort of social media companies and companies in the U.S., uh, when Facebook rebranded to Meta, it caused a huge, huge commotion. If you look at like the Google search trends for the word metaverse over the past, you know, past couple months, there was a clear spark in October, which is when they rebranded. And so because of that, because Facebook is putting such a, and Meta is putting such a large emphasis on virtual reality, many people think the metaverse and just think it's running around with headsets for the next 10 years. Uh, but in reality, it's actually much broader than that. Well, first of all, it's an $800 billion opportunity by 2024. So it's absolutely massive. But on top of that, it's really not just VR. That's a piece, of course, but it's augmented reality. And it's also virtual worlds, which you can think about as traditional gaming. Uh, and even companies like Roblox, right? Like half of children in America are playing on Roblox. You wouldn't typically think about that as a metaverse, but it has all the same components. You have a digital avatar, you have a digital ecosystem of goods and skins and things that you can buy, and you're engaging and socializing with people online. It's a metaverse. Uh, and the same can be said for the sandbox or Decentraland, these sort of crypto first metaverses, um, as well as, you know, even games like Halo. Uh, and for me, like one, one thing that I write a lot about is that Gen Z is driving a lot of adoption in the metaverse. And so even for, for, for people who are Gen Z, Club Penguin, Webkins, like a lot of the ga games that you played as a kid, they're metaverses too. Same as Pokemon Go, which is augmented reality back in 2016 when that was huge. Uh, you wouldn't think about it, but that is also inherently a metaverse. And so um, the best, yeah, the best way to think about it is just these sort of like online ecosystems that are emerging that people can really live, work, play, and, and socialize online. So uh, yeah, that's the metaverse. Yes, uh, I've played so so many of those um, Pokemon Go. I have to admit, even though I was a bit past my generation, I uh, I definitely was a collector of the cards. So when it came around, it was great. And because of where I was at professionally, I was traveling around the world, so I got to I got to collect the rare ones, which was pretty That's fun. Great. And others, which was Iceland, it was it was quite interesting. But um, those are those are really great examples. So another thing I think let's just you know a lot of this is around just demystifying terms that are used and making it practical and relatable to people. So let's talk about something else that kind of gets brought up a lot, you know, open versus closed metaverse. What are the differences? What are the advantages of both? Yeah, I mean, I think when you think about a closed metaverse, it's probably the easiest to understand because it's most most mostly aligned with web two. And you know, you're you're essentially not owning your data as a user. A company is profiting off of that data. And so when you think about Facebook and what they're building with Horizon Worlds, which is their virtual reality ecosystem, Say you design your avatar in Horizon Worlds, you're earning money through their ecosystem, whatever it may be, that is all still within Facebook's ecosystem. You cannot port that anywhere else. The same can be true said for, for Roblox. So even for myself, uh, I did a five-hour live stream after I wrote my Metaverse 101 article, uh, and I, I decked out my Roblox avatar. I spent like $100 on my face. It was like a limited edition, Sarah Larson face. Uh, and... I, all of that money is tied up in Roblox. I cannot take my Roblox avatar or any of the things that I'm buying, any of the worlds that I'm developing and port them anywhere else. Um, so that is kind of like the, the closest comp for like, what does a closed metaverse look like? It's that. Open metaverses are typically built on top of the blockchain and are web three oriented companies where theoretically all of the, the things that you are buying, like your avatars, they're all NFTs in some way, shape or form, right? So if you are Genies, which is actually one of our portfolio companies at Lear Hippo. They're building wearables for celebrities, but hopefully like more, more consumers over time. If I am Justin Bieber and I'm doing a concert in the Sandbox, Decentraland, and another sort of like Web3 first type of metaverse, 
I can bring my avatar and also all the different clothes that I'm wearing across these different ecosystems because they're NFTs. They should theoretically be able to work across all of these different ecosystems. And so um, it, it comes to it comes to be like land, for example, like you're buying and purchasing land within the sandbox and within the central land. Um, like that is that is kind of a, a core part of the value prop where everything you're purchasing in these worlds are effectively NFTs. But the open metaverse is basically just being able to port things in and out of ecosystems in a in a very effective way, where the user is owning owning effectively the things the things that you're uh, interacting with in the metaverse. Love it. Uh, was also a big gamer, so Borderlands was was my game. And you're talking about skins. I just remember the amount of money that I spent on skins back then. And it was, you were so addictive, but that those, those skins are stuck in that Borderlands game and I've, they've never been used again, even though uh, they were quite special, quite unique. And I, uh, I dare not to look at the amount of money I spent on that back in the day. So, okay. Well, so a lot of those lines though, right? Like skins is a, like just skins in the metaverse. That is a $40 billion opportunity today. That yeah. is absolutely yeah. massive and that is just traditional gaming i mean it, it of course moves into sort of web3 in the metaverse but this is something that gamers are already spending money on or are used to spending money on it's not a new concept like oh buying it's just you're buying basically skins that are built on the blockchain and you can wear in multiple metaverses that's kind of the benefit and you can sell them too and make money exactly exactly uh so such such great explanations last one mindful of time Consumer versus enterprise use cases. Talk about what you're seeing. What excites you there? Yeah, so we talked about a couple of the consumer focused use cases, right? Like gaming is inherently very consumer focused. We just invested in a play to earn game this past week called Nifty League, um, building a you know play to earn game. It's a, an arcade style brawler. That is a very consumer focused use case, as is you know traditional gaming or, or Web three games like Zed Run or Axie Infinity, the games that we discussed. Um, enterprise use cases think just like instead of me calling in from Zoom and talking to you, Scarlett, we have actual digital avatars that are representing us in a virtual world or doing meetings in a virtual headquarters, for example. So there are companies like Gather, for example, uh, where they're building out sort of digital HQs for remote first companies, which is great. Um, you can also do that in like the, the new metaverse is like the sandbox and Decentraland, even companies like PwC are doing it. So it's not just Web3 companies that are moving into the space. But then also a really interesting example is Microsoft. Microsoft is building Microsoft Match, this like hybrid sort of like VR, AR, desktop uh, metaverse effectively, where, you know, there are 250 million monthly active users on Microsoft Teams have a, a really interesting gateway into Web3 or into this, this universe via this new software that they're building. So you and I could theoretically be talking to one another, but instead of digit or displaying our faces, it's just like Microsoft avatar where you're seeing some avatars, some people on a screen, but within like the Teams environment, which they're calling Mesh. And so that's a lot of this is still very early. There are some companies that are adopting metaverse technology at a very fast pace because they're growing and they're remote. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're, we're still early in a lot of the development of this technology and see how it scales. Uh, but yeah, those are, those are a couple examples of, you know, you know, enterprise versus consumer. Awesome. Uh, I think you probably win for the amount of information in eight minutes, uh, that covered a very complex topic in, in many different ways. So that was, that was fascinating. And I think for all of you, so thank you so much for your time, Megan, really appreciate it. For all of you, as always, there is the full Q&A below. In that, there is a link to Megan's, uh, like basically breaking down of the Metaverse 101. It's a fabulous read. Definitely take time reading it. We'll get to a lot more detail than what we could do today. And outside of that, I just really enjoyed reading your Q&A. There was, I was smiling every every answer to every question. I think there was such practical and uh, and smart advice there at the same time. So. As always, thanks so much, Megan. Have a good rest of your day. And for all of you, until next week. Thanks so much. Bye, everyone.